Over the weekend, there was a lot of legitimate outrage involving customers of Dish Network. I have been a customer of Dish since 2009. I was one of the few customers that weren't upset. Dish customers, they were pissed off because ESPN had a carriage dispute with the provider. Midnight on Saturday, the ESPN family of networks went dark across Dish Network. People were understandably angry. I wasn't. For one, I don't really care for college football. When you watch the NFL as much as I do, it's hard to get into college football. The game is significantly slower. It's a hell of a lot less competitive. Why would I waste my time watching amateur football players with maybe one or two NFL prospects on the field when I can watch 22 professionals? Another reason I was not upset, I could give a fuck less if Dish quit carrying ESPN. Outside of Monday Night Football and the NBA, I don't watch anything on the worldwide leader in Woke. ESPN is highly produced garbage. The network is supposedly dedicated to diversity. But in their quest for diversity, ESPN has become the most segregated network on television. ESPN has left many victims in its wake in their quest to give reparations to untalented shitfucks. Call it reparations, call it woke welfare, call it whatever the fuck you want to call it. In the 40 plus year history of the network, ESPN has never lacked talent like they do today. One of the more high-profile victims in this quest for diversity is Rachel Nichols. We covered the saga between Maria Taylor and Rachel Nichols extensively last summer here on the channel. I'm not going to go into too much detail again today, but for those of you that don't know, Rachel Nichols was caught on a recording telling the truth about Maria Taylor and ESPN. Rachel Nichols had busted her ass for 25 years to be in the position that she was in. She was prepping to host the NBA Finals for the first time in her career when ESPN suddenly decided they wanted to give the job to a no-talent shitfuck like Maria Taylor. You know, in the name of diversity, equity, and inclusion, Maria Taylor belongs in multiple marginalized groups. She's black. We think she identifies as a female birthing person, and she is taller than 90% of male birthing persons. Rachel Nichols, she was caught on a secret audio recording telling one of her friends that this promotion of Maria Taylor was bullshit, and it was. That ESPN was sacrificing her to make up for their own shitty history of lacking diversity. Um, <laughs> okay, ESPN lacking diversity, never heard that one before. But anyway, ultimately... Rachel Nichols, she lost her woke welfare over this. Now, I'm not going to sit here and defend Rachel Nichols. I don't defend shit fucks. She's woker than Shay Shay on Gay Gay Pride Day. Now, even though the woke cucumber ripped her bongo, what happened to Rachel Nichols was fucked up. If there is one thing I cannot stand, it is a snitch. I can't stand someone telling on someone else or spreading someone else's business. My five-year-old nephew, he's in this phase right now, at least I hope it's a phase. He is in this phase right now where he thinks tattling on people is cute and funny. The other day I said, oh my God, the little fucker tried to correct me. You're not allowed to say that, KK. I keep telling the kid, one day you're going to tell him the wrong person, they're going to kick your ass, but... You know, he won't listen. I keep telling him once you get the reputation of being a snitch, he's going to follow you all the way through school. He won't listen. He's going to figure it out the hard way. Just like Rachel Nichols figured out the hard way, there is no loyalty in the woke movement. For years, Rachel Nichols was loyal to the percussion section of the woke band. Pound that brown. Girl power boss bitches. Taste the rainbow. Female empowerment. Vivacious victims. Mythical racism. I rep all that shit. I'm Rachel Nichols, bitch. I'm down with the butt bongo. It didn't take her long to figure out once your bongo is ripped beyond repair, shit fucks no longer have any use for you. Last week... Rachel Nichols, she was the guest on the All the Smoke podcast, which is hosted by Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson. The conversation shifted to the controversy last year with Maria Taylor. Some of you might know Maria Taylor by her legal name, No Talent Shit Fuck. Rachel Nichols explained how the audio was discreetly recorded without her knowledge. Watch for yourself. 
It was a different set of equipment than I had been using to broadcast at home. So my very first day, I'm there, I'm using the new equipment, and I didn't know that if you leave a particular app running in the background, that the line from my hotel room, looking into my hotel room, to Bristol would stay open. So I thought I was done for the day. I did the things you would do on your first day in a hotel room. I spent hours unpacking, um, called my husband, called, talked to my kids, uh, called some friends, called my doctor. And unfortunately, that entire time, nobody back at ESPN told me that there was an open line to my hotel room and anyone who looked at the feed could see me. No one shut it off, decided, oh, she clearly doesn't know she's being watched unpacking or doing all these other things. I said this last year, I'm gonna say it again. The person responsible for doing this to Rachel Nichols, they should have been immediately fired. Just think about how pathetic, how fucking lonely you have to be to sit around for hours listening to someone unpack their bags, just waiting and waiting for them to have a private conversation that you can use to your advantage. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have that kind of time. I don't have time to sit around spanking my wanker to your woke boner words. Ooh, ooh, I just heard Rachel Nichols say diversity. Spank my wanker. Ooh, ooh, she just said racism. Spank my wanker. Ah, she hit the trifecta. Rachel Nichols said misogyny. Spank my, oh, oh, oh no, I'm out of hand lotion. That's okay. I have preparation H. I can pop my butt berries with this cucumber. I normally have a hard time sympathizing with a shit fuck, but I can kind of sympathize a little bit here with Rachel Nichols. She was dealing with brand new technology. She didn't understand how it worked. She had been working at ESPN for 20, 25 years. She thought the people around her were more than just partners in the butt bongo. She thought they were friends. Over 25 years, Rachel Nichols, she shared many mornings with these shit fucks sharing a bowl of fruity pebbles. They had enjoyed many glasses of spiked lemonade together courtesy of Don's Lemons. They had bonded over mythical racism in the NBA. They cried together. When Sergeant Shitfuck Mark Jones bravely expressed his fear of police officers, Rachel Nichols had a certain expectation of privacy. Even if she was being recorded accidentally, she expected to be notified. At the very least, she expected whoever was listening to her private conversation to stop listening. Like I said, Rachel Nichols learned the hard way. These people have no loyalty. They have no values. What they do have is enough time on their oiled hands to listen to you for hours, waiting on you to say something they can spin into mythical racism. Now, this next part I'm about to share with you guys, it confirms one of two things. Rachel Nichols is either holding back because she is afraid to be covered again in Joy Reid's mythical racism wig, or it confirms that Rachel Nichols is one stupid fuck. She starts by saying the person who leaked this audio to the New York Times held onto the recording for a year, waiting to use it for leverage. Coincidentally, right around the time this recording was released, Maria Taylor was looking to renew her contract at ESPN. Executives at the Worldwide Leader in Woke, they felt the diversity Maria Taylor provided was worth $4 million a year. Now, if they were basing her salary off talent, they would make this no-talent shit fuck pay them to work there. They should have been sending Maria Taylor an invoice every two weeks instead of woke welfare. She thought she was worth $12 million a year. $12 million. Even though executives at ESPN are deathly afraid of being targeted by Joy Reid's wig of mythical racism, they couldn't justify that salary. Maria Taylor, $12 million a year? Negotiations were at a standstill when this recording of Rachel Nichols just happened to be released publicly. Listen to Rachel Nichols discuss it. Listen to her mention someone using it for leverage, then quickly backtracking. Roll the film. And unfortunately, I think there were still some people who had bad feelings and they held on to this tape for a year, just kept it in their pocket. And then when there was a point they wanted some leverage with their own situations, they fed it to the press. Mm. And 
the story that ran again in the New York Times. And I will say now what I said then, which is I feel very sorry that any of this touched Maria Taylor Mm -hmm. because she's a fellow woman in this business. It wasn't her fault what was going on. I wasn't talking about her actions. I was talking about someone else. And to even bring her into it, um, that was a mistake on my part. And if I caused her to be upset in any way, that stinks. I don't want to be that person, right? right? I don't want to do that. So I called, I texted, I asked our supervisors to set up a meeting, and I was just told she wasn't interested in talking to me, which is, of course, you know, that's her thing. And and I thought that when this became public, I should also apologize on air. And I did that. Are you fucking kidding me? You're sorry this touched Maria Taylor? This woman is so brainwashed that even her career being destroyed, even after she was royally fucked, she is coming to the defense of the woman behind destroying her career because she's a woke woman? Now, there is no evidence linking Maria Taylor to leaking this audio to the New York Times, but come the fuck on! It doesn't take Mulder and Scully to figure this out. Who benefited the most from this audio being leaked? Who turned into ultimate victim? You expect me to believe some production assistant at ESPN leaked this audio to the New York Times for their own benefit? What do they have to gain by doing that? Nothing. There is an old saying in law enforcement, follow the money. There were three people involved in this scandal last year, Maria Taylor, Rachel Nichols, ESPN. ESPN came out of this looking like shit. In their quest to end mythical racism, they practiced actual racism by removing a qualified white woman from her job and replacing her with a no-talent shit fuck. All on the basis of race. Sounds like racism to me. Rachel Nichols, she had her career and what was left of her reputation destroyed. She quit being respected by normal people years ago because she kept promoting propaganda. After the audio was released, she had her membership revoked at Woke United Methodist. Instead of forming a prayer circle, holding wankers to worship the woke oak tree, Rachel Nichols, she was forced to worship the oak tree alone. And what happened to Maria Taylor? She signs a multi-year deal with NBC worth millions of dollars. She has been hosting events that she's not even remotely close to being qualified to host. Olympics, unqualified. Sunday Night Football, unqualified. We were watching Sunday Night Football last night. At one point, Maria Taylor's on the field with Tony Dungy doing what she does best, spreading her mouth farts to a national television audience. My girlfriend, she looks over at me and she said, who the fuck is that lady? She sucks. This segment is useless. It was absolutely brutal television. Anyway, you tell me who came out ahead. Not only does Rachel Nichols believe that Maria Taylor had nothing to do with this, she fucking apologizes to her. Really? An apology? Maria, I am so sorry. I only used my hands to help lift you up as you climbed over me to the top of the industry. I should have offered you the services of the woke ladder instead. Rachel Nichols is either naive clueless, or afraid to tell the truth. You tell me, do you think Rachel Nichols really believes Maria Taylor had no involvement in leaking this audio publicly? Do you have any sympathy for Rachel Nichols, or do you feel like she got her woke karma? Give me your thoughts. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.